Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Nasser Vocational Training Center hosted a graduation ceremony for its sixth batch, which included 110 students from various technical and vocational education streams. To mark the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser extended sincere gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for their role directives to turn the center into a full-fledged educational city. He also congratulated the sixth batch of graduates who have completed this phase of their education, wishing them every success in their career. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa delegated the NVTC Board of Trustees Vice Chairman, Dr. Mustafa Al Sayyid, to attend the graduation ceremony on Thursday. Dr. Al Sayyid stressed His Majesty the King's keenness on promoting investment in educating Bahrainis, who represent the key pillar of the nation's development, progress, and prosperity. He described the center as a fruit of promising youth empowerment, vision in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. With the support of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince. The Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council of the Republic of Yemen, Major General Dr. Rashid Mohammed Al Alimi, left Bahrain today, concluding his three day official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Yemeni official, stressing the Kingdom of Bahrain's support for the Yemeni Presidential Leadership Council in carrying out its duties and supporting its efforts to restore legitimate authority and achieve peace, security, stability and development in the country. The chairman of the Yemeni Leadership Council and his accompanying delegation bid farewell by the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, as well as senior officials in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Yemen's ambassador to the Kingdom. On the sideline of the visit of the head of Yemen's Presidential Leadership Council, Dr. Rashid Mohammed Al Alimi, and his accompanying delegation to the country, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, held a meeting with the Yemeni Minister of Planning and International Cooperation, Dr. Waid Abdullah Badib. The Minister of Finance and National Economy stressed deep rooted fraternal and historic relations binding the two countries, noting Bahrain's keenness led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to further bolster joint ties in order to achieve common interests and aspirations. The two sides discussed ways of expanding joint cooperation and reviewed issues of common concern in addition to global economic developments. The Minister of Transport and Communications Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed received the Minister of Transport of the Republic of Yemen, Dr. Abdul Salam Saleh Hamid, who is visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain within the framework of the visit of the Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council of the Republic of Yemen, Dr. Rashid Mohammed Al Alimi, and his accompanying delegation to the country. During the visit and the meeting, they discussed ways of cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Yemen and the fields of land, sea, and air transport to strengthen social and economic ties between the two countries, which serves the common development goals. They also discussed the ways of Bahraini companies to invest and work in the transport sector in the Republic of Yemen, in addition to benefiting from the services and capabilities available in the Kingdom of Bahrain to develop Yemeni caters in the fields of maritime and air transport. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Mr. Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani, met with the Acting Secretary in Florida Department of Commerce, Mark Alder. They reviewed the continuous cooperation between the concerned authorities in the economic sector in both countries and the coordination and the growth between Bahraini investors and businessmen and their counterparts in the United States, which has a great impact on strengthening the bilateral relations. The Minister noted that the United States trade zone was launched during His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's last visit to Washington as part of the Industrial Sector Strategy 2022-2026, as well as Free Trade Agreement to maximize its benefits. Officials and decision makers in your senior positions in the public and private sectors and community institutions affirmed that participation in the prize of Her Royal Highness 
Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for the advancement of Bahraini women, which the Supreme Council for Women recently announced for its seventh session, is a national duty that reflects the commitment to translating the objectives of this award that has been implemented. The award was established by a royal order of His Majesty the King and bears the name of Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, President of the Supreme Council for Women, and in a manner that reflects the progress and leadership of the Kingdom of Bahrain. At the same time, they pointed out that institutions reap from participating in the award in terms of productivity and performance, in addition to highlighting efforts of women and their advancement. The fourth edition of the Bahrain South Korean Business Council Forum was launched in the Korean capital Seoul. The president of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Abdullah Nas, stressed the importance of strengthening the partnership relations between Bahrain and the Korean business sector and pushing them to broader horizons at all levels and working to invest in the promising opportunities and the projects available in both friendly countries. He indicated that the forum comes in light of the unprecedented global economic repercussions imposed by the Ukrainian-Russian crisis, which brought more negative repercussions of the global economy, which is still affected by the coronavirus pandemic and its negative impact on the movement of economic growth, slowing production and investment, as well as high inflation rates. Mr. Nass called for moving towards forming economic blocks with the idea of economic integration to reduce the repercussions imposed on societies from time to time and to take advantage of technological developments in the business world to raise the level of local industries and make them a major factor in the economic growth movement of countries. A new service updating people about their power and water consumption has been launched. The Electricity and Water Authority will send a short message to every consumer on a monthly basis after the issuance of the utility bill. The EU Bahrain Conference Broadening the Tent, Freedom of Religion and Belief concluded with a number of debates and sessions that discussed ways to develop peaceful coexistence and overcome the challenges. The conference touched upon freedom of religion, belief and manners of expression. More details on this report by Sara Break. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the first EU Bahrain conference broadening the tent, freedom of religion and belief, from the 30th of May until the 1st of June 2022. During his opening speech on the first day of sessions and discussions, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif al Rashid al Zayani, said that the Kingdom's long experience as a regional trade center has given Bahrainis a unique understanding of the value of cooperation and dialogue between all religions and communities and the benefits to society from protecting and ensuring enshrining these freedoms based on the kingdom's determination to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms regardless of gender, origin, religion or sect and its belief in the importance of spreading the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. This conference will be just the first one of many of them that had to be done in the future and we have to be absolutely uh, convinced that is just the first step because this relationship between you and Bahrain are so, so important. And we had to make people know what is really happened between these two institutions. The experience of what's uh, happened here during these three days, but also the experience of living in Bahrain, where coexistence is a natural thing, uh, has to be done to improve it outside of Bahrain also. Renouncing, devising conflicts and religious or racial hatred and promoting dialogue between different faiths and civilizations. This conference is really uh, very important because uh, it is talking about coexistence and uh, freedom of belief uh, in Bahrain and uh, uh, it is also uh, retracing the experience of many countries, especially the European countries, about uh, the relationship between uh, religion and politics. And of course this is a very interesting issue uh, since uh, it could help uh, when tackling it uh, correctly, it could help to uh, understand uh, the roots of uh, blind violence, the root of hate speech, and the, the way of working on this uh, uh, on this on this problem uh, in order to uh, 
to have uh, pluralism, to have respect of pluralism and respect of coexistence uh, between people uh, in, in the society. For me, personally, it was um, extraordinary to arrive in Bahrain. It's my first visit, in fact and uh, to find that there was such a, an open kind of um, relationship uh, between the various faiths within Bahrain and in a wider sense um, a much more open kind of attitude towards the various regional um, powers including uh, of course Israel. Freedom of religion and belief is protected in the Kingdom of Bahrain by Article 22 of the Kingdom's Constitution, which states, Freedom of conscience is absolute. The state shall guarantee the sanctity of places of worship, freedom to practice religious rites, and to hold religious processions and meetings according to the customs observed in the country. This conference was very much important because it was first EU, uh, Bahrain exchange on freedom of religion or belief and uh, it was very interesting to see also from the legislative point of view what are the laws in the European Union regulating uh, freedom of religion or belief and what are the laws um, in Bahrain regulating this freedom of religion or belief and uh, of course uh, as uh, I'm first time here it was an uh, amazing opportunity to learn from your context and uh, to learn um, what we can uh, maybe take away from Bahrain to the EU and maybe what uh, Bahraini society can take away from the European experience uh, in, in Bahrain. And is also based on the Kingdom's commitment set out in the International Convent on Civil and Political Rights and the International Convent on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Participants from the EU and Bahrain from different disciplines of decision-makers, experts, academics, religious leaders and youth representatives attended these sessions and discussions.